Hi everybody, it's me, our Dallas. And in this quick video, I'm talking to my friend Kramer about a tool that he just built called Nuru. Now I had to use Zoom because my other tools weren't working. So there's no video of us during the rest of the call, but I just wanted to give this quick intro before we get right into the demo. Thanks. Steven, why don't you tell me what prompted you to, uh, to build this? Well, actually I've been working on some console tools for some AI stuff. And as I started going, I wanted to do everything in C-sharp, but I went out and looked for various options and started with some of the other packages and they didn't provide what I wanted. And I forked them, started to create pull requests and realized that I'm like, I don't like the whole routing mechanism. I want it to be just like ASP.NET, right? Or very close to ASP.NET. So I actually did create a whole new routing engine for one of the others. And then I asked Claude to say, how much of this code did I write versus the original. And when it got up to like 25% and we had something left to do with putting in the pipeline, I'm like, what pipeline? And their pipeline, they had to view like a mapper between my routing to theirs. And I'm like, okay, just forget it. Rewrite the whole thing. And that's what we did. When I say we, I mean me and a bot, of course. And I wanted the whole ASP.NET routing, which we're gonna, we're gonna see. And it works extremely well. Got it written pretty quickly, but getting it to be performant those benchmarks are in the repo. Getting to be performant took quite a few iterations to use some spans here and there and, and make it AOT compatible. It's going to be even better AOT compatible in the future. Right now I have to do some, there's where you tell it not to trim stuff, but eventually I will get it to where it's just pure, complete AOT. It, it works under AOT and, and in the performance tests ridiculously fast. So nobody will ever complain, but I'm a little bit AOT nutty right now. So I'm trying to be extremely pedantic on that. But that's why it happened. There's another library coming that will help with a bunch of shell commands. So the point is, I think with .NET 10 single file apps, that C Sharp is now first class citizen on the um, scripting. They're not actually scripts, they're actually apps, right? right? But console apps, C Sharp is going to be the way to do it. I've already eliminated all my PowerShell and Bash scripts and writing everything in C sharp. And I'm extremely happy with it. But that was the driving driving force. And I need it to be performant for the AI agents to use. Sure. All right, let's take a look at the, the repo real quick. So I, I see we just released uh, version two about half an hour ago. Um, so we're gonna check that out. And we were looking in the uh, samples folder here as we were talking before recording and, and seeing how you were setting up some of these scripts. So for example, we have a you know, different calculator options here. And these use the new shebang syntax at the top of the file. It's a new .NET 10 feature that you were just alluding to that makes it so we can just turn this into an executable script. Uh, and it works right now pretty well on Linux, assuming you've got .NET 10 installed, not quite supported yet in PowerShell on Windows, which is what I'm running. So we can't do a good demo necessarily today. But, but yeah, you can just say .NET run and then pass it in the name of this file, calcdirect. And it will just run this as if it were a program, right? And it, it pulls in everything it needs. So that'll be awesome once .NET 10 is is released and everybody can use that. And I'm sure it'll, you know, be working on Windows here in the near future. You need to say run, Steve. If you change the permissions to executable, there's no .NET run. Oh, right, right. Just... Yeah, sorry. Even better. Yeah, you can just run it. Yeah, yeah and I, I had an example of that all the way up to the point where I, I didn't have .NET 10 installed. So we could show what that looks like. All right, to, uh, to get started, you just need a, a program, like a console app, and then add this package, right? And then here's a little bit of what this looks like. This is what was intriguing to me, is it really is a lot like uh, minimal APIs in ASP.NET Core. So the idea is that you can build this application uh, as a console app and provide it with routes that will map to different handlers. Some can be fairly complex, some can be very simple. You can use dependency injection on a per handler basis if you want to. For those more complex approaches, I understand you're using Mediator. This is not the commercial Jimmy Bogard's Mediator, but a, 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 your own fork that, that you've built that's free to use. Is that right? Right. Cool. And then and once you've got that set up, you just call builder.build like we're used to in ASP.NET Core and then run the app. So uh, once you have that, then you can run operations just like this. Or like like you were just saying, if you if you turn it into an executable script, you don't even need the .NET run. So let me let me see what that looks like. Let's jump into to PowerShell. I already have a console app called Newer Demo here. I'm gonna add the package. It's gonna probably tell me it's already added. And then uh, let's just jump into 
in this case, I'm using Visual Studio, but but we could be obviously using VS Code or Notepad or whatever. And we just have this very, very simple application. We're going to use the new app builder to, to set up the, the builder that's going to control creating the routes. We're going to create a single route here that just adds two numbers together and returns back their sum. And that logic is just right here, right? So it's just inline inside the string. We'll build it, we'll run it, and we'll see what that looks like. All right, so we'll just make sure that's saved. We'll come back to the console. This is really meant for console use. And so we can just say .NET run, dash, dash, what is it, add, and then we can add, you know, 35 and something and have it run. And voila, look, it's 104, all right? So we get our, our calculator works. Let's look at something a little more complex. So I'm gonna copy an existing demo that already has uh, a bunch of the different math commands in it. And this is the one from the samples folder. I pulled out the, uh, the top few lines, Again, because it wasn't working uh, on Windows at the moment for, for me to be able to run it as just a, an app directly. But otherwise, this is just a, uh, a standard console app. And let's take a look. One thing we just added that I haven't tested yet is this auto help command. So we'll see, we'll see what that does. So in here, I think it's going to be .NET run dash dash help to see what the help looks like. And we'll wait for that to blow up because it's our first time trying it. Oh, no, it works. Okay, so in here, you can see all the commands. Um, you got a command for help, of course. You could say add, you could say compare, divide, factorial, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let's see if we do .NET run, dash, dash, we'll say subtract 150, and it works. Or we could say .NET run, dash, dash, factorial 20, and again, that works. It's a big number. All right, so then what does this look like? And, and how does dependency injection work? So let's jump up here. We're registering a singleton scientific calculator in here as a service that's gonna help with some of these. And this direct approach is literally just a Lambda for, for these routes, right? So if you detect that it's two doubles coming in, then we're gonna Lambda into this right line statement and that's gonna be super fast. Is that the idea? Yep. All right, for something that's a little more complex, we're gonna register commands and then those commands are gonna get routed with your, your version of mediator, right? And Correct. so a command looks like this and it implements I request just like mediator does. And then it has a handler and that handler does the actual work. And in the handler, we're actually passing in a dependency in this case, this calculator service, and it's going to perform the, the actual operation in this case and then, and then return back the result. We have the same thing for doing a prime check or doing a Fibonacci. So we don't have to put all of that more complex logic inside of you know a right line statement or inside a Lambda. We can have that use a, a better architecture that's easier to test, et cetera, that uses mediator for those commands. So you can kind of see, see how all that works. Everything's in just this one file, just because it's a sample. And also to make it so that you could run this as its own command. So if we, let's see, take this over here and we add another file. This won't run, but I'll just show you what it would look like. So we'll add a new class and we'll call it calc all here, and we'll put all this in here. And let me grab the uh, the top lines that I got rid of before, like this. I think that's about right. Theoretically, what this, yep, this what this would do is let me run this locally, right? So yeah. let's get rid you've of the .cs. A, you've got a project link in there too. This, that's my source directory, but you can change that to a package link too. That pound colon package, right? And just get name with uh, so it's pound colon package time warp new root, and then there's the at symbol with a version. Yeah. And you can just use it from straight from Nougat. So it'll pull the package in. And then what's the version syntax? It's at. There's a right up next against it. I don't even think there's a space. It's, yeah, like that. And then, yep, that would be it. All right. So this this isn't, again, this isn't going to work on my machine, but that's about what it would look like. And so we have this file calc all. And if we jump in here and look, we'll see, here's that file. And if we switch to Linux, all right, you can see that uh, calc all is currently marked as executable here, read, write, executable. Uh, and so you would be able to run calc all again if you had the right version of .NET installed. And so for me, I don't have that in here and I didn't have a chance to, to get it going before this demo, but that would be all it would take to run that script. And so you can use that inside of your build scripts or anywhere else that you would use PowerShell or Bash or what have you. And so this really makes it so that it's really easy if you use .NET and C Sharp anywhere that you would be writing script files. And, and that, I think, was a big part of the motivation for doing this, right, Kramer? Yes. One of the things that I actually do is override commands. So if you look at the way the routes work, I can intercept any particular command by creating a .NET run file with the same name of a command. For example, if you wanted to intercept git and commit, I could create a route that says git commit, and then inside that handler, say, 
do whatever like GitHub check you wanted to do, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm really trying to like intercept, but all the rest of the things I could just do with the pass through ARG and then just call the regular Git for it. So that's kind of the motivation. There's a few, there's a few handy Linux tools that I like that just don't quite do what I want them to do. And I didn't feel like rewriting the whole thing. Right. So instead I can now just create a route that intercepts it, do the parts I want to do, and then call the base command and do the rest. Nice. Yeah. So, so it could rewrite them a little bit at a time based on whatever parameters they take. You could write that part and if slowly, slowly migrate a command from Go to C sharp or Rust to C sharp or whatever. That's cool. All right, so the tool is called Nuru, and you can find it on GitHub or NuGet. If you think it's cool, be sure to give it a star. It's only got 26 stars so far. It's still pretty much brand new, but that's all we have for today. Keep improving. Thanks, Steve.